Hello, this is Mr. Painter with another Fabulous Quizette tutorial. Today we are working on Quizette 841. But before we get started, please put your name, date, team, and class color on top of the paper. Because without your name and class color, I cannot give you credit for all the hard work you do. Alright, here we go. Notes for number one. Now, this should look very familiar from last week. However, we're going to go a little bit quicker. A little bit more direct so the idea is on Friday you do a really good job on the quiz all right first part notice that we have P to the fourth power equals P to the 36 so now we got to ask yourself is because we have the same base we need to know 4 times what gives you 36 so we're just gonna actually do that so 4 times what gives you 36 so 4 multiply question mark equals 36. Because the bases are the same, don't worry about them. And just focus on the exponent because that's what they're looking for. Alright, algebra says take the opposite of whatever you have. So if you're thinking 4 times something gives you 36 and you don't know what that is, you just find it by taking the opposite of multiply. So divide both sides by 4. You can draw a line down the middle if you want. Um, divide 36 by 4. So now you get the unknown equals 36 divided 4 is 9. So therefore, 9 is the correct answer. Now, in order to get credit this week, please show the work in the step of division. If you don't show the work and you just put a 9, I will not take it for full credit. And it will be refunded back to you. All right, number two, find the missing value to make this equation true. All right, notice that again, all the bases are the same. All right, so here we go. So because all the bases are the same, I'm not too worried about the bases. And what we got to do is address the question mark, the three, the three, giving us 20. One. Now, the rules of exponents says if you're inside the parentheses, notice that these are both inside the parentheses, we are adding those up inside the parentheses. Now, if you are on the outside of the parentheses, such as this one here, you stay on the outside and you also multiply. So now the question is, something plus 3 times this set gives you 21. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the opposite of multiplication and division first, just like we did for number one. So the opposite of multiply three is divide three, divide three. So now the question mark plus three, threes are out there, equals 21 divide three, is seven. So now it just got a lot easier. Something plus three must give you seven. However, because you're an, an amazing eighth grade student, what you're gonna do is you're gonna show your last step of the opposite of adding three. So the opposite of adding three is to subtract three from both sides. Therefore, something has to give you four. And four is the answer you type in the box. All right, number three. See how fast this is going? Because we already did this last week. Okay, number three, a lot of students had problems with this last week. But hey, another go around, hey, hey, makes it always easier. All right, first step. Take your five and your six and multiply them together. Why? Because notice here, there's no sign between the parentheses. Because there is no sign, you do need to multiply. So 5.6 parenthesis, parenthesis, times 7. Now, the expectation on this is you are able to do it without a calculator. Yes, no calculator because you really don't need it. Because this right here is a one digit times a two digit. So it's really not that bad. In order to do it, we got 6 times 7 takes you to 42. And 7 
times 5. That's right, you got it. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, plus that 4. 62, 392. However, that looks way too big. How do we get 5.6 times 7 to 392? There's something that just doesn't look right. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Well, looking at it, um, looks like we need to move the decimal over by 1. If we do that on top, we must do that on the bottom. Again, it's the whole rule of algebra. Whatever you do to one place, yep, you got to do that to the other place. All right, so 5.6 times 7 takes us to 39.2 times 10. And what I'm doing is bringing down the 10. See how we have the same base here? So we're going to go ahead and use them. The 2 and the 3, think to yourself, if they're inside the parenthesis here, also inside the parenthesis here, what was that rule to make sure you do a fabulous job? I think you got it. Yeah, you were thinking, well, Mr. Painter, just add 2 plus 3. So take your 2 and your 3 and just add them in there. So bringing this down, we have 39.2 times 10 to the 5th power. Now, looking at this beautiful scientific notation, which is quite not there yet, what is the very last step that we must do? So take a look at it right now. Think on your own. What is that last step? Yep, I think you got it. Well, Mr. Painter, you have to have the decimal only one place from the left. So in other words, it has to be between the 3 and the 9. So again, decimal has to be one place from the left. So it should be 3.92 times 10. And because I moved it one place to the left, we're going to add an exponent to represent that move. So final solution here is 3.92 times 10 to the 6th power. All right, number 4. Now, notice number three and number four are very similar, except here, notice there was no operator. Operator means multiply, divide, add, or subtract. But when there is no operator, you automatically know to multiply. Now, here, for number four, it looks very similar. We got the parentheses, the 10 base, and so forth. But here is add. So we need to be very careful about the rules that apply to multiplication compared to those that add. All right, so let's go ahead and do number four. So because it says add, you need to stay inside the parentheses first. So we got 5.7. Now times 10 to the fourth means the decimal has to move over four times to the right because it's gonna make the number larger. So we got one, two, three, Four. So I'm going to even put times 4 to the right. And that came from that 4 right there. Now, wherever you have the little dips and the loops, you fill those in with zeros and remove the decimal. So 0, 0, 0. So final is 57,000 for our first set of parentheses. Added to, now we got to do this one here over here. So we got five decimals at the end. So pretend this is like $5, right? Because there's no decimal in there, the decimal is always on the far right. So five is the same thing as I say 5.0 or 5.00 or $5 and zero cents, so forth. So decimal is on the far right if there isn't one there. All right, times 10 to the fifth. So we're going to move that decimal over five times to the right. So one two, three, four, five. Fill in one, two, three, four, five. Now notice here, the number of zeros did match the exponents. Be careful not to always follow that rule because for an example here, 
the four, well, there really wasn't four zeros. It just meant move four decimal places to the right. And here, it meant move five decimal places to the right. So times five to the right. So here we have 500,000 is how we'd read it. Now, what we got ourselves is a very cute and beautiful third grade addition problem. So what we can do is we can just take, again, try to do this. You don't need a, really a calculator to do this. Uh, take your left side, put it underneath the right side. Line up the right side with the right side. So I'm going to start with 0, 0, 0, 7, 5, like that. Don't line up on the left. So again, on the right side. So here we go. Lining up with the right. 1, 2, 3, 7, 5 is how we add up. So one more time, line up on the right side with the numbers. So going straight down, we have 0, 0, 0, 7, 5, 5. So the way that's read is 557,000. Now, what we do is we do want this value to be in scientific notation. So scientific notation will be a decimal only one place from the left. Now, think to yourself, where is that decimal right now? Yeah, I think you got it. You're like, Mr. Painter, it's on the far right because there isn't one, just like we did up here. So no decimal, it's always on the far right, but we want it one place from the left for scientific notation. Here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, takes us to one place over to the left. So that's our final answer. So we got 5.57. The rest of the zeros don't matter after the decimal times 10 to the number of places the decimal were moved. So they were moved one, two, three, four, five times. So we have 5.57 times 10 to the fifth power as our final solution. All right, going to number five. Number five and six are two new beautiful problems this week for your absolute enjoyment. And here they are. Select all of the following that are equivalent to three to the negative five times three to the fourth power in parentheses two on the outside okay so let's talk about this one this one here is very similar to number two so we're going to compare right now before we do it now think about the rules of the exponents when they're inside the parentheses so go back to number two here well what was the rule when the question mark and the three were inside Ah, uh, yes, it was adding, right? Then when you have a value on the outside, know that you have to multiply that with the set of parentheses. So we're actually going to keep that concept going for number five. But I just wanted to bring it up so you knew where we're coming from on that. All right, here we go. So I'm going to bring this down. Let's say over here is fine. So we got three to the negative five times and I'd like to rewrite it again because it kind of just gets my brain going and thinking about this thing um, times three to the fourth close parenthesis to the second power all right because the bases are the same um, we're gonna go ahead and leave them the same so I'm gonna go ahead and stay with the exponent so we got three bring down the base negative five plus Remember, we add on the inside, 4, parenthesis, 
times 2. Now, notice because the bases are the same and there's no equal on this side, you're like wondering, well, why is the 3 here this time? Again, because there's no equal on this side, um, we're going to keep the 3 as our common base. So here we go. Negative 5 plus 4, notice that we have a larger subtraction than we do have addition. So the answer here is going to be negative. For an example, if you got $4 and Mr. Mejia takes $5 from you, bad Mr. Mejia, you would be down $1. So we have 3 to the negative 1, parenthesis, times 2. So now we're there. Now, 3 to the negative 1 times 2, just do negative 1 times 2. Well, negative 1 times 2 is 3 to the negative 2. See, this actually really wasn't that bad. So one more time, just kind of recap. We're going to add on the inside. And any exponent on the outside gets multiplied in with the parentheses. So here we got negative 5 plus 4. The negative 5 is a larger subtraction than what we had before. So negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Don't forget to bring down the times 2. And negative 1 times 2 and negative times a positive is a negative 1 times 2, negative 2. Now the rule with negatives, and you're going to be working on some IXLs with this this week as well to remind you, is 3 to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over 3 to the positive 2. Whenever you have a negative exponent, it automatically changes into a fraction as a positive exponent. So now you can just break down the bottom and finish it out. So it looks like this. We got 1 over 3 times 3. And 1 over 3 times 3 is 1 over 9. Okay. It is absolutely important to show your steps. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 steps in order to work this out. Because the question is asking, and I'm going to highlight, select all. So that means there is more than one correct answer to this problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this list and see if we can eliminate and figure out correct and wrong answers. All right. So first step. 3 to the negative 1. At any time did we have a 3 to the negative 1 here? Now, notice right here we do have 3 to the negative 1, but 3 to the negative 1 times 2 is the whole thing. So A is a trap answer. So A is not right. So I'm going to cross that out. Because, again, 3, negative 1 times 2, it's the whole thing. That times 2 makes that not true. Now, when we did do 3 to the negative 1 times 2, notice right here, by itself, is 3 to the negative 2. So that 3 to the negative 2 is one correct answer. Therefore, A was a trap to see if you could fall for that. C, negative 3 by itself. At no time did I ever see a 3 with a negative, so negative 3 by itself, within these steps. So no, 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 no. All right. So therefore, negative 3 is not a correct answer. D, 1 divided 9 was the final answer. So 1 divided 9 is the actual correct answer because that came from down here. So actually, let's circle this. So that came from there. That came from there. So far, so good. E, 1 over 27. If I remember, I believe at no time did I ever have 1 over 27. So no, 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 no. E is out, never happened. Now F, you have to work this part out and to see if it matched one of these. Because again, the word equivalent, oh my goodness, good old math vocabulary, it means is it going to be equal to? So F, if we do this, 3 to the 5th power minus 7 
gives us 3. Hmm. What is 5 subtract 7? Ah, uh, yes. 5 subtract 7 is 3 to the negative 2. But wait a minute. 3 to the negative 2 was a correct answer here, making F also equivalent. So your correct answers here are B, D, and F in order to get this question right. If you overlook one of these and don't get all of them, you will get it wrong on the test. So take about 30 seconds right now, just kind of look at that closely and see how that worked out. Again, take a look at it. Look for the steps. And remember, it's important to understand how to do it, not what the answers are. Because the how is your 50% of the grade on a test or quiz that's going to make you successful. All right, if you need more time, feel free to pause the video and take a look at it. Last one, number six. Oh my goodness, another beautiful math problem. The question is asking for how many times greater is... 4 times 10 to the 3rd power, then 3 times 10 to the 7th power. So, this one's pretty easy. I like it. 4 times 10 to the 3rd is 4, 1, 2, 3. It's 4,000. Versus, because remember, they're asking how many times greater. Okay, so we got 4,000 versus 3,000. And actually, there's a typo on this one here. On this one, go ahead and change that 3 into a 4. And actually, now that gets my mind going. Number Tuesday, number 6 is good. Uh, let's check. Wednesday is good. And Thursday is good. So I just got a typo on that on that notes part, that, which is fine. Uh, so we're just going to make that correction. Again, we're making the correction because... The front numbers have to be the same in order to compare. So 4 and 4 now match. So here we go. We have 4 times 7, or no, what am I doing? 4 times 10 to the 7th power. So that means we got a 4. And you know what? I, I'm liking the red today. 4, 7 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, now here's how we compare. We're going to divide. Dividing, we have 4. Divide 4 is 1. And the solution to this is given by matching up zeros. So for an example, 1, 2, 3 zeros here match up with like these three zeros here. So take off a zero, take off a zero, take off another zero, take off another zero, take off a zero, take off a zero. And notice you have one, two, three, four zeros left. One, two, three, four zeros. So it is 10,000 times greater. That's it. Thank you. And this concludes your quizette for your notes. Have a great day.